I know that some of you don't like the videos where I talk a lot and share my thoughts. Well, this is gonna be one of those videos. So if you are part of that group, maybe you should look for another video to watch. 20 days have passed since I started reorganizing my notes in a new system. And for the most part, I'm pretty happy with it. However, like uh, all of my new ideas, things have been evolving. And my plan today is share with you what I'm happy with and what I'm still trying to figure out. I love the timeline idea. I'm really loving it, but I'm trying to come up with some guidelines to help me figure out what notes I should keep in the timeline and what notes should I keep in the other notebooks. Uh, and just to make things clear, the problem here is uh, with my phone, with the mobile client. If I'm using a computer, there's no problem. There's a problem with the phone because Evernote doesn't have all the notes in your phone unless you tell it to download all the notes, which you shouldn't do depending on the size of your <laughs> account. In my case, it would be crazy. Here in my system, all the non-timeline notebooks are set to be accessible offline. All the notes are downloaded to my phone. The timeline is the only notebook that isn't accessible. The notes are not accessible offline. Picture this, there's a giant line behind you, you are the next one, and when you approach the counter, the person asks for a number or, or, or some information you know that you have in Evernote, but for some reason that's not in a, an offline notebook, and you f look for it, you search for it, you find it, and then you tap the note, and that note doesn't open. It's taking a while to open, let's say, a PDF or a large image, and and you, you're a little bit stressed there because there is this giant line, the person is looking at you. Of course, I'm exaggerating here a little bit, <laughs> but I, I'm sure we've all been at some uh, point in our lives in a situation like this. It's not something, a big problem, but sometimes it is. Sometimes you really need that information. Uh, but that's the, that's the problem. It feels like it's uh, impossible to win prediction game. Which notes should we keep offline and which notes are okay to stay uh, we can, uh, not offline in, in a notebook like my timeline? And it's not only the fact that the notes are offline. For example, the notebooks I set in my system, uh, not the, time, the non timeline notebooks, they are places. Uh, I, I've talked about this be before. They are these containers, they are these spaces that I'm comfortable going to. It's easy to open that. For example, a trip, if I need information about a current trip, it's so easy to tap the trips notebook and I'll see only the notes about that current trip. So it's fast. It's not only that it is offline, it's faster. At least that's how my brain works. And I like this uh, idea of these containers where I can go and find that information. Remember that this game is really hard to win. And what I'm trying to do is learn with what I'm doing. I'm paying attention to what kind of note, not the notes, but what kind of note, what kind of information I've been looking for when I'm out of the office, when I'm not at home, and trying to learn with that and moving some of those notes to the offline notebooks. And by the way, that situation where you need notes <laughs> and you don't have them offline is the topic of today's B-side video. So if you are a supporter on Patreon or YouTube, you'll find the links below. Okay, now let's talk about the containers. If it is something I'm working on or a, an idea for the future, it's easy. It's a notebook, it's offline on my phone, and it's part of my shortcuts. That's sad, that's okay. I'm pretty happy with that. But there are other containers that I moved to the timeline and I was not happy with them. A good example is my relationship with Evernote. Uh, I've talked about uh, my collaborations 
um, notebook, which is offline, and I had a note for notebook there. In the past, I didn't have a single note. I had multiple notes, and I have those notes inside a notebook uh, with the ECE title. ECE stands for Evernote Certified Expert. And all my interactions with Evernote, each one of them, they were notes in that notebook. I moved them all to the timeline with the ECE tag when I started this experiment and started using a single note for my interactions with Evernote. Not good, not working. <laughs> Too many interactions. Uh, the other collaborations are okay, a single note works, but it doesn't work for Evernote. So I created the ECE notebook again and moved all the notes from the timeline to that ECE notebook. And of course, if that's a notebook, I set it to be offline on my phone. I don't know if I will need all those notes, but I'm trying to, again, come up with this guidelines, trying to organize things in a way that it, everything, it's kind of the same. Maybe I'll turn the offline uh, setting off in the future, but for now, every notebook that is not the timeline notebook in my system is set to offline on my phone. Another notebook I created again is the Patreon notebook. I have some shared notes with patrons and another other notes there that I use, but it, that's the hard part. I need those notes not as often as I need the Evernote, uh, the expert notes in the note and in the ECE notebook, but I I do need them more often than other notes that I have in the timeline. And filtering them or looking, searching, is taking too much time because I already know what the information is that I'm looking for. So having this information in a container, in a notebook, it's so much easier. I can use, for example, common J on my computer and just go to that old book and the notes at the top are the ones I recently created and probably are the ones that I'm looking for. So it's, I don't know, it's so fast. And I created that notebook again. So he, he, we are going back to the beginning of the, the video. This is the dilemma. What is a timeline? What is, because again, I don't I don't see the timeline as an archive. Uh, there are things that I'm, I, I, I'm currently using. I'm, I need that information, but I, I think the key here is how often, how frequently I need the information. If it is once in a while, it's okay to stay in the timeline. If I need it all the time, it's much faster to go to the notebook. So Patreon, ECE, uh, I guess these are the only ones that I recently created. And now what to do with those notebooks? Should they be in the shortcuts or not? Is common J and off, just type the name of the notebook. This is what I'm testing right now. For example, the family notebook is not uh, part of the shortcuts because I have the documents note there, which points to every document that is in the family notebook. So I don't need it. Uh, it's even faster to go to that note, look for a document and click on a document to open the note that I'm looking for. The EC notebook, I moved to the shortcuts space, but the Patreon notebook is definitely not there. Uh, hitting common J on my keyboard is fast enough and just start typing Patreon. I'll, I'll find the notebook and I'll be able to quickly jump to that notebook. So that's the situation. <laughs> I guess this was <laughs> about questions rather than answers, but I hope it inspired you in some way. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you soon.